There is no other time to consecrate the altar of the Mary Help of Christians College Seminary than November 17 because of our departed Archbishop Oscar. He is the only reason why we chose this date. We planned it during the quarantine, but God willed otherwise. So now we are here remembering the goodness of Archbishop Oscar V. Cruz, who at the start of his ministry in Lingay and Dagupan in 1991, chose to stay with the seminarians, the future priests of our Archdiocese. My dear seminarians, you see an ordination every year, but you will not see a consecration of an altar every year. This is more rare than an ordination. So, I invite you to appreciate everything that will happen tonight because this is the last time we will consecrate the altar of Mary Help of Christians College Seminary. The consecration of the altar borrows its ritual from the rite of baptism. Your professors have taught you that at baptism, water is poured and with the words, I baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, a human being becomes a divine being, a child of God. Water cleans, water kills, water gives life. So at the beginning of the Mass, what did I do? I poured water on the altar. It was not just sprinkled. We wanted the water to flow. As water flows on the baptized person, we borrowed water and then poured water on the altar to signify cleansing, living, and a new beginning. At baptism also, at baptism also, we put chrism, which is oil mixed with perfume, on the crown of the head of the baptized. We will also pour chrism on the altar. It is perfumed oil that we bless traditionally on Holy Thursday. It is perfumed oil to signify that the odor of the altar is Christ. That the altar is fragrant even if our noses cannot smell the fragrance. The altar is always fragrant because it is Christ whom the altar represents. So after the pouring of water, there is the pouring of chrism. And then, after that, we are going to wrap the altar with a white cloth. The white cloth of the altar is symbolic of the white cloth at baptism. Boy or girl, the baptized always wears white. Your priests might wear green or red or purple or white depending on the liturgical season but the altar is always white it is never red it is never green it is never purple because the white cloth of the altar is reminder of our baptism we will also light the altar light the altar with flame from the candle. It is also reminiscent of the candle that we offer at baptism to the baptized. Kaya nga, kapag nag-away yung magulang at yung ninong at ninang ng anak, ay sinasabing magpalitan na tayo ng kandila. Because the candle is symbolic of the light of Christ that we receive at baptism. We are going to burn incense. 
it is not from the baptismal rite. The burning of incense is exclusively for God. And the burning of incense is now a reminder for us that the altar now represents Christ. As the newly baptized also becomes Christ. That is why St. Augustine, after baptizing a baby or an adult, kissed the baby and whispered, My Lord. So we will kiss the altar and we will also say, My Lord. Because the altar is the symbol of Christ our Lord. After the Mass, after the Mass, the non-ordained like you can kiss the altar, but it is a privilege that is given only on the day of consecration. So you will form a line and venerate the altar by kissing it, whisper a prayer to the Lord symbolized by the altar to make you a fervent seminarian, to make you a holy priest one day. Someday, my dear seminarians, I hope not soon, this chapel will collapse. Someday, this altar will also crumble. I hope this chapel lasts for 100 years. I hope this altar lasts for another 200 years. But like all human symbols, this altar, this chapel, will crumble one day. Perhaps by a big earthquake, perhaps by a strong typhoon, perhaps by strong floods, or storm surge, or tidal wave, we don't know. Perhaps by a bomb, we don't know. But we are very sure this chapel will end. And when this altar has crumbled to pieces or has disappeared, we would not be afraid, we would not be sad, because by then, we would be living with God forever. And then in heaven, you will see living waters flowing all the time. And then in heaven, you will see incense filling the place and no longer going up because that is where all incense prayers go. In heaven, you will see perpetual light no longer by burning, flickering candle lights, but you will see the face of Christ, the face of God, who is light himself. In heaven, you won't have to kiss the altar to smell the fragrance, because the fragrance of Christ will be all over heaven for us to enjoy in eternity. In other words, my dear seminarians, my dear brothers and sisters, the consecration of the altar tonight is a foretaste of the flowing waters in heaven, of the fragrance in heaven, of the prayers that reach heaven, of the whiteness, of the newness that is always in heaven. May this celebration remind us only of heaven. May this celebration be an opportunity for us to profess our faith that God is here. His angels are singing with us. God is here and He will never abandon the people, the seminarians, the future priests who call upon His holy name. In silence now, let us enter into silence and in our silence, let us recognize it is the Lord who is here.